All right, good morning, everybody. It's a Tuesday, but it is the beginning of the trading week. Let me remind you that trading's risky, not appropriate for everyone, past performance, good or bad, unnecessarily indicative of future results. I'll get to the disclaimer at the end as well so you can see it. So what do we do at this time of day? Well, we go through the global macroeconomics. And since it's been a holiday weekend in the United States, um, it's been a while since we looked at this data. So this is a great opportunity for us to uh, realign our satellites. So what we're trying to achieve is, first and foremost, uncover what's happening right now. The next thing is what, what is happening in the long run. And what we're trying to do is get congruency here. We look at what uh, institutional investors are doing. We look at what central banks are doing. We look at what other market participants are doing. Then hopefully we trade with the crowd. The goal isn't to outsmart everyone. The goal is to uncover what's actually happening so that we make wise investment decisions. There's been some uh, updates to QuantBox, and there's been and there's more more things happening behind the scenes. So if you've noticed something different, cool. Uh, if you noticed an error somewhere, well, that's what happens when you start tearing down the drywall. You start to uncover a gremlin. So, anyways, we'll get there. Let's log in to the pro into the Q box. All right. Let it load. Let me expand the page to full screen. Okay, yields are hanging in there, still uh, below 4.5. I think it's actually 4.45 right now. So this is going to update uh, when the market's open. So it's okay. It's not great. Oil has popped. Remember, there was a triple bottom or quadruple bottom. We've been fighting it and fighting it and fighting it. Maybe it's finally moved to the top of its range, and maybe we'll finally break out to the upside. Okay. Gold might be interesting today. The S&P 500 might be interesting today. It looks like we're struggling to load Bitcoin. There we go. Euro dollars got a little bit of bid and Bitcoin back below 70,000. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Let's look at our hit list. Euro dollar, very bullish. Pound dollar, very bullish. Euro yen, very bullish. DAX, very bullish. Gold, very bullish. USD CAD, bearish. Okay, oh yeah. Oil's up today, but we got a bearish score on oil. We'll see if that'll flip around. Seasonality is a one, but everything else is, uh, well, almost everything else is quite negative. Notice oil usually goes up this time of year. This is why I've been very patient. Like we found a support level. If if I'm going from memory, by the way, um, the, on the chart, we found a support level and it's been bouncing and then comes back and then it bounces and then comes back and has bounced and come back. But and so the, there's definitely downward forces going on. But usually we are a buyer of that. Okay, negative scores on USD Swiss franc. And Bitcoin. Rand has come back around to neutral, which is kind of interesting. What else? So these are new features that were added last week. This is a quick glance at the the yield on the two-year treasury. It's going up, and that's bad. Okay. 
Yeah, that's it. And it's above the eight-day average. So that would be risk off. Looking at the put call ratio, uh, right now it's neutral. Okay, a couple of days ago, the remember this represents the options trading community. What are the options traders doing? And right now they went from risk on to neutral on their way to risk off. It's literally one right now. Two shakes of a lamb's tail, and it'll actually be full on risk off. It's nice to have these things here, huh? The treasury market and the options market to see what they're doing, what they're trading. I know, right? Okay, looks like they haven't updated this yet. There's a lot of things that are supposed to be done on this page. So, hey, maybe this week. And what do we see? Just ever so slight risk on. This was a four. Now it's a three. Things are cooling off a little bit. Okay, it's just cooling off. Things haven't got, you know, things aren't happening right now. Remember, it was a holiday. Lost a lot of volume and volatility on Monday. Okay. Maybe even on Friday. I didn't even look at the volume on Friday. Um, Might have been low if people were taking Friday off. See, I think that's what you do when you're playing the game, when you have a job. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Didn't mean. Uh, when you have a job and you're like, please, boss, can I have a day off? <laughs> oh, my God. Joseph, uh, I think it's everything. I, I could double check. It's a good question, Joseph. But it's the standard put call ratio. So I asked the developers, like, can you get this data? And they're like, yeah, we think so. Um, and they, they went and got it. Um, but double check it for me. Just like Google it. It'd be the put call ratio. Yeah. Uh, burned, I'd have to double check that one as well. I think it's just the 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 spot price listed somewhere. Which one? Don't know. Right? So there's going to be a discrepancy, I think is what you're saying. Some might be a little bit higher, a little bit lower. We go to a, a, a data provider to pull the data in. It costs money, right? So it's there. They're, they're pulling it from some sort of exchange. So maybe it's the uh, Coinbase, for example. If Coinbase is the data provider, then that's where it comes from. Shouldn't matter. In general, we're, we're not, this isn't uh, a, a platform that you're, you're not, you're not looking at the, the quant box Bitcoin price and going, buy, 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 sell, 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 <laughs> right? It's more like, what is what is the the trend in that asset and and what you know what are the logical economics that would impact the, the value of a bitcoin what you know what is the trend in the in the daily price um that kind of thing but which which one i'm not entirely sure but it wouldn't be an etf no 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 Okay, this is a closer look at something we just uh, reviewed. But if you ever wondered, okay, up. And this would represent like the idea that maybe the Fed can't cut. Maybe the Fed's not going to cut. Maybe the Fed's only going to cut once. Yeah, so we have to uh, take that into account. And then, of course, things can change. Maybe on Friday, <laughs> things could change. Look what I did. The developers were supposed to fix this, and they didn't. And I'm like, I wonder if I can do it. 
So I just did it. Whoa. So we we have a better scatter plot. I pumped it up. It goes to negative 15 and plus 15. And there isn't actually, a, I don't think you can even get a 15 on Quantbox. So good. So now it's got everything. Uh, I think the big the the biggest number you can get is a four a thirteen, right? So, anyways, there there we are. So uh, silver, bro! Holy smokes! Holy smokes! Yeah, silver has been good to me. Um, unfortunately, this one would have been great for me if I was on it. <laughs> so that's uh, okay, silver. It left me behind. Yeah, I actually, uh, I actually struggled to not work over the weekend, and I didn't quite actually do it. I I work one of the days, but I, I guess I just wasn't looking at silver. Okay. Yeah, well, it's burned. It's not ETFs. I can tell you that. Definitely not. We're not pulling that in. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I can tell you, Quantbox was providing Bitcoin data and analysis before the ET before the spot ETFs even came out. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So anyway, so silver's huge. Let's look at commodities. Remember. In a period of expected high inflation, and in particular, in a period with high inflation and a slowing economy, don't I don't like calling it stagflation because it's an overused word and it it's a very particular word that the media just uses a lot. Uh, so I don't want to call it that. Maybe it actually is, but just think of it as slowing growth and high and persistently high prices. In, in particular, inflation's higher than GDP is what I've been pointing out, right? And in that period, uh, you want to own metals, okay? And probably food and probably energy, just anything real that need that you need to actually use, okay? Because when you're running out of money, you might have the same amount of money, but Inflation means you can buy less and less with it. So what happens is you get rid of more and more of the frivolous stuff and you end up spending whatever you still have on, on the stuff you need to survive. And those are the things that go up. So if your children are hungry, I hope you turn off Netflix and buy some macaroni and cheese, right? Um, okay, so anyway, so whatever you actually need, just, just think of... A zombie apocalypse, right? You all of a sudden you're like, gather everything we need. <laughs> that, that's all that matters, right? Uh, so, anyways, uh, these assets are going up. Gold, gold is, eh, not much. Okay, but wowzer, 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 huh? Look at some of these numbers. So maybe uh, these have some negative scores. Maybe they'll come back around. Look, look at the crypto. Nothing to report. Stock indices. Japanese stock market coming down. Remember how uh, how bullish it was for so long? It was cray cray. Nope, not no more. Quantbox is giving it a negative three, and it's just down slightly. FTSE is neutral. Dow is basically neutral. Negative three is not a big score. Um, you know these markets haven't quite opened. It does remind me, today we uh, moved to T plus one. Yeah, which means it used to be T plus three, I think, ooh, in the 90s, and then we moved to T plus two. Now we're today we're moving to T plus one, which means it should just take a day to settle uh, a trade. Now, this was a, you know, Seemingly impossible back in the day when everything was done in the trading pit. If you now you'll have to watch a documentary on how it was done, but it was done person to person, and then you just scribble something on a piece of paper, and then you took it to somebody, and then they they did 
they did something with it. Um, and it was remarkable how well it actually worked. And a lot of it, you know, there's a lot of honor system on it and, and stuff. But somehow it all kind of worked. But it did take multiple days because someone, a different agency then had to then double check everything and then make sure there was a transfer of custody of ownership. And, but everything was done on paper, you can imagine. Um, so it took three days. And then with the use of technology, it took two days. And now there's no tr trading in pits. And you would think you could do it in seconds, but now they're committing to one day. But there's still a lot of parties involved, which I don't know. To, to me, like they're worried about it. Um, they meaning the exchange and stuff, which if they're worried about it, makes me think they don't quite have the technology yet, which is strange to me to to say like with the clearing houses are not hooked up with the big banks and the big banks are not hooked up with the exchange. And you're like, really? Really? <laughs> like, how come it doesn't settle in a billionth of a second if a hedge fund can measure everything happening in the stock market and place a trade in a billionth of a second how come we can't settle a trade in a day right so anyways congratulations now here's the other funny thing about that in the 1920s trade settled in one day <laughs> so we're back to a hundred years ago <laughs> So anyways, congratulations. Congratulations, stock traders. You've caught up to 100 years ago. Okay, majors, what do we see? Dollar weakness, dollar weakness, dollar weakness, neutral, dollar weakness, dollar weakness. That's actually risk on. Yen up. Yen up, yen up, yen up, yen up, well, yen pair meaning, okay? And that's uh, risk on. And Swissy looks a little bit strong. That's risk off. Seems like there's a lot of potential for risk on today. We don't quite see it yet, as we've noticed by looking at the risk gauges, but the market hasn't opened yet, so we haven't gotten going. You should already know the calendar. So we got some uh, inflation tonight. Sweet. We have consumer confidence today. I, I've never been a fan of consumer confidence. So if, you know, but I don't know. If that floats your boat, there it is. CPI out of Australia, you know, we're very interested in whether they're going to cut interest rates or not cut interest rates. Okay. Lots of debate in the market. Okay preliminary cpi okay not that powerful early gdp weekly jobless claims so thursday's an okay trading day it's all right okay here the thing to notice is okay is we expect a rise in unemployment a slowing of the U.S. economy and the Fed to cut interest rates. <laughs> That's what all that is. So normally we wouldn't care care at all about such a little thing, 218 versus 215. But I think we're hypersensitive and, and slightly bored. So um, that, that carries a lot of weight. Home sales. Look at this. We're going to go from 3.4 to zero. <laughs> <laughs> holy smokes is that true wow wouldn't that be interesting because this is actually prime time really uh residential right in fact you should have already and maybe that's what this shows you should have already closed a deal on your house if you were going to move right if you were going to move it seems like at least in my world, every kid I ever met in kindergarten is now graduating high school. <laughs> it's amazing, right? Yeah. I've had two kids now, two, with the permission of their father, that wanted to smoke a cigar on their graduation party, and they turned to good old Uncle Wayne. So uh, am I really? <laughs> I have some heroin over here. Do you want some of that? <laughs> 
<laughs> Anyways, I gave him cigars, which is kind of funny. But um, but what you which means like going back to the you want to buy a house probably 45 days before your kid graduates or school ends and summer begins. So you should have like already found your house 45 days before the 45 days ago and then went in negotiated and all that kind of stuff, got a price and then go into escrow and sometimes these things take 60 days depending on the situation and then you got to go through all that and then you got you, you then you close on the house and then you got to like get the packers and the movers and all that kind of stuff and so it would be like next weekend you should be moving into your house right so you can see the last number seems to be big and this number seems to be small and that means it's over the real estate season for retail is over for residential. Oh, my God. Okay. Do you want to switch your kid's school in October? No. Okay. Anyways, Chinese manufacturing, what do you think? Is that important? Look at these numbers, though. Um these are two shakes of a lamb's tail away from contraction. China is almost in a manufacturing recession, is what this says. Will we ever get a 49.9? Probably not. And Friday, nothing. What? Well, hell's bells. Hell's bells. You know what's on Friday? PCE. Core PCE. PCE deflator. Super core PCE. I'm pretty sure PCE is on Friday. I don't see. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's just not here. Let me know if I'm wrong or right. I'm pretty sure PCE's on Friday. And that is a market mover, so why it ain't here? Don't know. I'll have to talk to the developers. Maybe they didn't put enough score on it. They're like, you know what's important? Consumer confidence. But you know what's not important? PCE. <laughs> You're like, wait. Hey, don't knock it. They're 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 developers. Yeah. They're not economists. Yeah. So anyways, yeah. Oh, Adam is. Yeah, yeah. So that's a big one. That's that's the, the whole market. Uh, and also, there not there an Australian interest rate decision? I think somewhere in here is it when is it after the CPI? Might be Wednesday night, but it might be just later. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So everyone, yeah, PCE. Does anyone know about that one? I mean, the, the, let's see if I have a trade ours open. I do have a trade ours open. Let's look at the sonar. Oops. And GDP, I said, eh. yeah, this one doesn't even have P. Interesting. Okay, so this is Tuesday. And we, uh, New Zealand, Wednesday. Building, 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 kiwi, 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 kiwi. RBA housing credit, no? Maybe I'm wrong. I thought we had one coming up. I must be thinking about something else. So here's your 
yeah, here's your Friday PCE. Oh, and Kitty Cat uh, GDP, that could get interesting. And uh, and then uh, all the CFTC stuff. Interesting. So, yeah, I'm wrong. So there isn't an Aussie jobs report. Maybe I'm having a brain fart. Was it last night? Could on the holiday, maybe? Uh, it is June 18th. Yeah, so I'm not even close. CAD, June 5th. All right, so yeah, I'm off on that one. It's interesting that um, so Sonars hasn't picked up a pattern. Boop, 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 boop. It hasn't picked up a pattern um, on PCE. Isn't that interesting, huh? But it's going to come out the same time as GDP. So, yeah, we got to be careful. So this is not a traders webinar, but um, this just shows us that um, the market could get kind of jumpy with the two different events happening at the same time. Remember, traders isn't just paying attention to the volatility. It's like, is there a reliable pattern to the volatility? It's your, it's applying chaos theory, if you will. It's not, but if you think about it, like the volatility is the chaos, and the pattern, okay, is what chaos theory is is about. Can you find a reliable pattern inside the, you know, the chaos? In this case, that's what it's trying to do. It's not doing chaos theory math, but so if there's no pattern, then all you have is chaos. Right. So, anyways, uh, PCE, PCE, PCE on Friday, muddied up with Canadian GDP. So, uh, interesting. All right. This is the capital stock. Okay. Gold. Now, remember, it's been what, six weeks? I, you know, I, I had maybe even longer. I had gold going up to 2,500, and we've been stuck around 2,300, 2,350 for a long time, right? And it's because we keep expecting inflation to come down. So once again, I hear that the market expects core PCE deflator to only rise 0.2. Now that, that's such a subset. It's so funny. Uh, so everyone is looking for whatever. Um, and uh, but if we find out on Friday, there's still inflation, you know, there'll be a demand for gold, there'll be demand for silver and platinum and copper. And all those things are some of the big the thing the things that the market is already bullish on. And notice too, it's been enough time where I've been telling you when inflation is higher than GDP demand for commodities go up and all of a sudden you see like what are what are the biggest stockpiles of assets right now copper platinum silver oil gold it wasn't always that way if you just go back you watch a video from a month and a half ago some of these were more like in the middle some were actually quite low and we were putting, you know, we were putting, all, we were trading currency more than we were underlying assets. Swiss franc, very weak. Yen, very weak. Okay. And where's dollar? Whoa, 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 whoa. 50 50. Okay. Now, compared to yen and Swissy, that's risk off. Well, you, it's obviously neutral. But why is it neutral? If it was risk on, we'd be shorting the dollar like we're shorting the yen. So we're not so sure, but also the Swiss central bank is cutting interest rates. So we are sure about this one. We're not sure of what the Fed's going to do. 
Okay. But, you know, when you hear people on, on TV debate the Fed, are the Fed, are the Fed going to cut or not? You could just, once again, you could sound smart because you've actually done research and you say, well, I actually looked at the commitment or traders report and I looked at the positioning on the U.S. dollar by institutional investors. And, uh, well, they're very neutral. They don't, they're not convinced a cut is happening soon. There's a difference between soon and eventually, <laughs> right? Yeah. So they're they're funding because they're not confident in the Fed cutting. Then they're funding their positions with yen and Swiss franc. Okay. Yeah. But you can actually see it. That's cool because this used to be way over here when it when we were risk on. Okay. Money flowing back into new zealand right uh sort of this is the best part about having data i think okay the market's 50 50 this was a very bearish asset but the thing is money didn't actually go into new zealand they lost a 21 percent of their bears okay not not selling isn't buying. Maybe it'll become that, but no, 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 no. So this market's 50-50, cautious. The pound, 50-50, be cautious. Okay. But at least the change here is bullish. So look, there, there's about like some, about 9%, let's say. If you average these out, about a 9% change in Kiwi and pound. Pound is bullish, right, is more bullish. And then this one, Kiwi, is just less bearish. <laughs> so be careful. I would, this, the stock here is about the same, but they're, right, you can see up here. But mo real money is actually going in to pound. Who knows? Maybe it's this money, um, but there's a big difference. Okay. The market's heavily short Aussie dollar, yet there seemed to be a big positive change. Okay. Okay. They picked up some bulls. They lost some bears. And, and, you know, you're like, right? But you can see the percentage change is where you get this number from. So that we lost 10,000 bears and gained 10,000 bulls. Yeah, well, but the market's two-thirds short. So the impact of the gain the 10,000 bulls was significant. So it's very, 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 very bearish, but I don't know. You know, you'd have to be careful buying Aussie because you'd end up being the person trying to pick the bottom of the market. Is it really going to? I mean, look at that. It's more than two thirds short, even after this move. So anyways. Euro, 60-40. Lost a lot of bears. Okay, that could be interesting. Copper market's very long and, right, lost some bears. So just think of the bears holding the price down, and once they leave, the price rises up. So let's flip around and see the big negative changes, or, or, or right? And uh, yeah, the Japanese stock market, right? 77% long, but people are actually starting to short it. They're now betting against it. Not much, but a significant increase from nobody to somebody.
Okay, look at that, 130% increase in shorts. But only 5,000 contracts, right? So yeah, pretty funny. Nobody's statistically shorting it, but someone did. Okay, so when, the, when you're long the Japanese stock market, you want to be short the Japanese yen, and you can see that's also happening. So all that makes sense. But look at that, right? No bulls, more bears. Okay. This is definitely a, a weak asset. Silver. Okay. 6,000 new bears, 6,000 new bulls, whatever. Right? Very, very long. Yields should be falling according to the market. But, okay, lost a lot of bear, uh, bulls and gained a lot of bears. For this trade to work, okay, for that trade, the, you need the Fed to cut. And everything is basically neutral. Everything else is basically neutral. So that's the change in capital stock and the change in capital flows. I hope you took some time to look at seasonality. We talked a lot about this last week. Okay, so silver has really had a good month so far. And there's still room to run historically, so on. All right, that's how you want to look at this. Loading, loading, loading. Now oh, forget it. It's loading. There's a lot of data here. Uh, I want to get to this one is what I want to get to. By the way, there is a lot of stuff going on in the background uh, as far as new features for QuantBox. So I hope to show you that very soon. I was playing around with some earlier this morning. Okay, right now... Week over week, the biggest winner is up 1%. Biggest loser, yeah, okay, a lot came out of copper. A lot has come out of gold. These are, these are things that have been shifting one way, but there, were, there was a lot of capitulation late last week. Okay. And then silver down a little bit. So these might be dips, you know, dips to, to buy. Okay. Oil down at 77 at one point or 78. Okay. And that's one I think. Uh, I don't have my platform up. So that, uh, so these commodities while we wait for C, uh, a PCE on Friday, okay, could be uh, interesting, right? Um, so you want to get back to this where you want to, as the market opens today, you want to make sure you're trading reality. And if we're risk on, then we're probably buying the stock market. We're probably buying some commodities. We might be, you know, probably selling dollar, but definitely yen and Swiss franc. But we're not quite there yet, right? Week over week, we're just not there yet. There's no market yet, okay? And so we need these things to open. I want to see what the treasury market's going to do. Remember, when this, when this is trending down, the stock market is probably going up. 
just ain't happening right now. That's all. Okay. Okay. That's inflation going up. Okay, look at that. The two-year back at 5%, 4.93. Okay. Is that good? No. No, no, it's not. That's not good. So be careful. Let the market open. There's no glory in being the first trader into a trade. That's not what you're trying to do. You're not trying to outsmart everyone. You're trying to figure out what the market participants are doing and trade with the trend. And looking at everything on Quantbox right now, there isn't something to do except probably lose money. So hold your horses, son. Okay, wait for the market to open, wait for positioning. Remember, the big news is like days and days off. People might have, they still might be on vacation. They might have taken Friday off and Monday off or uh, Tuesday off. Therefore, you know, you get this huge long weekend and it only costs you two vacation days. Um, I don't miss those days of having a job oh my goodness but anyways uh caution 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 careful 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 i'll see you later cheers